Okay, good morning everybody. We are holding over here in the 13 Principles of Faith. And we are in Yud, we are in Yud Beis. We are on the 12th of the 13th. And we've been moving along, and these are referring to the coming of Mashiach, as we said before. Ani ma'amin be'amuna shalema, I believe with complete and absolute faith. Be'viyas ha-Mashiach, that Mashiach is going to come. Vi'afa pish yisma, may even though he delays, im koza, nevertheless. Achak Eloi, I'm waiting for him. Be'chol yom shi'yovai, that every single day he should come. We already given two shiurim, two classes on this, and now we're going to conclude today with the third one. And we come to the point where the Mepharshim begin to explain to us what is it that Klal Yusel needs to do to merit and to hasten the coming of Mashiach. We're waiting already thousands of years. We have been in Gullus, we've been in exile since the Romans expelled us from Yushalayim over 2,000 years ago. We've traveled around the universe. We've been in the Dalit Kanfai Sa'ar, it's the four corners of the world. And we are waiting and waiting that one of these days Mashiach is going to come. So is there anything that you and I and the rest of Klal Yusuf can do in our generation that will help to hasten along the Bias HaMashiach, the coming of Mashiach Zidkeinu? Is there anything we have to say? Is there anything we have to do? Are there mitzvahs that we have to become experts in? What should we do on our own, on our behalf of Klal Yusuf and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to bring the coming of Mashiach Bimheira V'yameinu speedily and in our days? So the Rabbam writes the following idea. And he says, The condition that is going to bring Mashiach, as the Rambam writes, in Yisrael nigalim The Jewish people are not going to be redeemed unless they do tshuva, unless they repent. The Torah has already promised us, Shesayif Yisrael lasa is tshuva b'sayif galusan. And that is that the end of Klal Yisrael, which is the generations that will be coming right before Mashiach is here, the last thing that they're going to do, which will merit and herald in the coming of Mashiach, is going to be Lasay's tshuva, they will repent, and they will return to Hashem. And when this nation, the Jewish people that is holding at the, the last moments before Mashiach will come, immediately they are going to be redeemed. So the, so the Rabban writes very clear over here that the, act, the activity, the mitzvah that the Jewish people must be involved in before Mashiach is going to come is that we all have to band together and the Jewish people have to, as a nation, we have to do tshuva. And it would seem from the words of the Rambam over here that if Saif Galusan, if the end of the Gullus is not going to include tshuva, repentance, returning, figuring out how it is that we're going to rectify our deeds and the like, so then how is it possible that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to bring us back, bring a Mashiach and bring the ultimate Ka'ulu, the ultimate redemption? And he brings over here from Avsaj Yugayim, our earlier commentaries teach us that at the end of days before Mashiach is going to come, there are going to be tsaros, rabbis, verais. There will be many difficulties that are going to befall our nation. And as a result of seeing the challenges, the tests, the difficulties, the pain, the suffering that is going on around us, we're going to be left to the following conclusion, that we have nothing left to choose for ourselves besides teshuva, besides repentance. And then when we make that choice in which we activate the world of tshuva, tshuva is something the Gemara tells us was created before the world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew that we're going to sin. Hashem knew that we're going to fall short of our obligations. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew that we're going to make mistakes. So He created something called Teshuvah. He created the advent of, of, uh, of repentance in order to allow us to amend the mistakes that we did in our ways. 
So says the Rav Saji going over here, and that is that once that a person begins examining all the things that are going on in the world around us, just take a look at our world as we see. A person looks around the world and they see that we're shut down already for coronavirus 10 long months. And those of us here in Los Angeles, California, it is not getting any easier. The death rate, the toll is, is on the rise. The amount, of, uh, the amount of people that are being diagnosed daily with this, this disease is happening much more. It's even more rampant than it was in March of last year. I've heard already in the last several days, so many people that in, from the schools, from the shuls, from different places that are at home and they are in quarantine because either they got it or they were exposed and they have symptoms, they don't have symptoms. Classes were shut down in yeshivas, classes were shut down in schools. People are not going to shul. Why? Because it's here. This is a tzara. This is a painful reality of our existence today. And Rav Sadji is going to say, why does the Kodesh Baruch Hu do that? What does Hashem want? He wants us to bend behind the president and say, tout him and laud him because you have operation warp speed, you got the fastest vaccine in the world. He wants us to go and support the mask companies and show our true colors that we're proud to wear a mask over here in the US of A. What? He wants us to, what? to take our zinc and our vitamin C and our vitamin D every single day to make sure that we don't get any germs. What does HaKadosh Baruch Hu want from us? Says of Sanji Goyin, when you will find yourself in the generation that is coming before Mashiach will, will be here, and we are literally on the threshold, on the doorway of Mashiach's coming, so HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to send sorrows, rabbis, many, many difficulties, painful struggles of the Jewish people. Think about what's going on in the world today. Assimilation right now is 70% in America. Some are estimating it's even more. That means 7 out of 10 Jews in America, in Chutzlars, outside the land of Israel, are intermarrying. That means the children from those marriages are not Jewish. And even if they are because the mother is Jewish, chances are they don't even know that they are a Jew. The amount of people that have that have left the pathways of Yiddishkeit, the amount of suffering that is going on amongst our children, it's enormous at this point. Tzorois, Rabbis, those are great difficulties that a Kodesh Baruch is sending our way. What is the purpose? What does a Kodesh Baruch want from us? Says the Rambam, there's one thing that Hashem is asking for at the end of days. He's telling us and He's reminding us that the Jewish people have imperfections. And every tsara, every difficulty that we go through is to arouse our, our feelings and our emotions and our awareness. That our Kodesh Baruch Hu wants us to come back to Him. And therefore all of the, as, as, the, as this Rav Sajid Goyen is writing over here, all of the tsaros, rabbis, verois, and the bad things that are happening right now, look at all the infighting in Eretz Yisrael, look at all the Chil Hashem that takes place, Look at all the anti-Semitism in the world everywhere that you look. Hate, 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 hate for the Jewish people. What's that all about? So we tell ourselves, well, you know, if the Jewish people would just be a little bit more supportive of their governments, if they would just do a little bit more over here, if they would be more careful not to let the Arabs in and all the different things. This is not the answer. The Rambam is saying over here, the answer is tshuva. The only thing that's going to turn back, the tsarois, rabbis verois, is tshuva. And therefore our Kodesh Baruch is bringing it to us in our generation in order that we should recognize what his plan is and then nivchar b'tshuva, we will choose to do tshuva. And once that happens, royim lihigaya, we will suddenly be worthy of being redeemed. And that's what it says in the Gemara, im Yisrael oisim tshuva. If the Jewish people do tshuva, nigolim, we are going to be redeemed. Vim loy, and if not, if we don't stand up and start returning to Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mamid Melech Kasha, Hashem is going to bring a king around who is going to be as difficult as a Haman. And then we'll do tshuva. Klau Yisrael in the times, he's quoting over here, Haman in the times of the Purim story. So in those times over there, we know the Jewish people, they, were, they got themselves into big trouble. 
And so what did HaKadosh Baruch Hu do? He brought a king whose name, he brought a, uh, an enemy of the Jewish people named Haman. He was the most wicked of people. He despised us. But as a result of him being in the limelight and impressing his hatred upon the Jewish people and trying to destroy us, the Jewish people woke up and they started doing tshuva. So everything that's going on in the world today is only here to get us to do tshuva and to repent and return to Hashem. Once that we do that, that's what the, the Rambam, and that's what Sadi Goyin, and that's what Chazal is saying in the Gemara, once we do tshuva, nigal in miyad, Hashem is going to redeem us. Now listen to these beautiful words. The Chavetz Chaim explains in a sefer called Sipisa Yeshua. One of the questions that everyone's going to be asked when we go up to the heavenly gates after 120 years is, Tzipi Sili Yeshua, did you wait for Mashiach to come? Were you looking, were you longing, were you waiting every single day? Were you dreaming that there's going to be a better life than the life that we have over here in the Gullis and the exile? Were you waiting for it? And the, and the Chavetz Chaim writes, Etzim inyan icha ge'ula. Why is it taking so long for Mashiach to come. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants the world to reach a state of perfection, and He wants the Jewish people to be lifted up like the B'nai Malachim, like the princes that we are, and He wants all of our enemies to leave us alone so that we should be able to serve Hashem with simcha, with joy, and with ava, with love, and with yir, and with fear, and of Hashem. So what's taking so long? Bring Mashiach already. Why is HaKadosh Baruch Hu delaying everything? Says the Chavetz Chaim, we don't really have much of a choice. It has to be that it's going to take a long time for Mashiach to arrive. Why? Because the last Geulah, the last redemption, which we are waiting for right now, we've traveled the entire expanse of all the continents of the world. And now we find ourselves in America, and there's those that are in Europe, and those that are in South Africa, and there are those that are elsewhere in the Middle East. The Jewish people are spread out across the universe. And when the Geula, when the redemption is going to come, and Mashiach will arrive, it's going to be the Kates Kol Hagolis, the end of all of the exiles that the Jewish people have gone through. It's 2,000 years that we're not in the base of Mignash. It's 2,000 years that we haven't been able to bring a single korban, a sacrifice. 2,000 years, kohanim are living outside the realm of what is supposed to be the life of a kohen because they don't have the avoid of the service in the base of Migdash either. It's 2,000 years since we saw the Shechina t- tangible here in this world. So when Mashiach is going to come now, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is, is that it's going to be the end of all of the exiles from history, from the time that we were originally shoved out of the base of Migdash by the Babylonians until right now. So therefore, why does it have to delay? We can't take it much longer. It's not looking so pretty for the Jewish people. Says the Chavetz Chaim, since that this is going to be the end of all the exiles, and this is going to usher in the coming of Mashiach. And when Mashiach will end up coming, that means that the world is going to achieve its state of perfection and everything is going to look beautiful. So in order to be worthy of achieving that level, we must begin to correct and fix up all of the kikulim, all of the damages that the Jewish people have done from the day that we became a nation when we stood by Har Sinai. The Jewish people are the Am Kshe Arif. We are the stiff-necked people. We are brazen to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We shirk our responsibilities. We make mistakes day after day after day and we don't learn from the previous generations why they got in trouble. And therefore, there are many kikulim, there are many damages that have been done along the way. There are many holes in our nation. There are many blemishes and stains on the very soul of the Jewish people and our long, illustrious heritage. And therefore, says the Chavetz Chaim, in order for Mashiach to come, 
each and every one of us have to realize that if we want Mashiach to arrive and to change the nature of the world and bring us the brach and the simcha and the goodness and the success in spiritual terms that we are desiring and that we are looking for, we must become tikkunim, we must begin fixing up that which is there. Ubariches hagolas yisukan akol. And so HaKadosh Baruch Hu extends the exile. And the reason that he extends the exile is to give us the time that is necessary to make the corrections and fix up the mistakes of either the present or to even correct and fix up the mistakes of the past as well. The gallus, the exile that the Jewish people go through, has another intent. And that is, it's mevairer, it clears out, the, it clarifies that which is the ra, the good, the bad, me'atoi from the good. It cleanses everything. It gets rid of everything. Like we know that in Mitzrayim, in Egypt, it was called the kor habarzel, which is the refinery, the fiery furnace. Now, just like when a blacksmith takes his metal or his gold or his silver and he wants to cleanse it, he wants to get rid of all the impurities, he puts it into the fire. So to Klal Yisrael was placed into the fires of Golis of the exile of Egypt. And over there then they became cleansed of all their impurities. And the Jewish people that exited, that went into the ultimate Geula, the redemption of Egypt, they were clean and they purified even more and more and more and more as they went along through those 49 days in the wilderness. So too, says the, says, uh, the Chavetz Chaim, the reason that the Gullus is so long and the reason that we have to delay the coming of Mashiach is because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is waiting for us to cleanse ourselves, to recognize what is truly good and what is bad. To know what a brach is, what a blessing is, and what a klala is, what a curse is. To be fully aware of what chayim, what life is all about, and the other option, mavis, what, what is going to lead to one's death. And the more that one's eyes become clear, and their heart is purified, leif tahor barli alokim, the heart of holiness and purity, that HaKadosh Baruch has, it has embedded inside of me, created inside of me. That's what we're trying to accomplish and to achieve. Only then, says the Chavetz Chaim, will Mashiach be able to come. And he writes, This takes a long time. It takes a very long time for the Jewish people to learn the lessons properly. It takes a very long time for the Jewish people to do tshuva properly. It takes a very long time to cleanse us from the nature that is in our fiber, in, a, in the world right now, to remove all of these impurities. It takes a long time. The Khalil Olano, whoever says the Chavaz God forbid, God forbid that we despair from the fact that it's taking so long. And do not think that this we're gonna it's gonna end up empty-handed over here at the end of the day. Says the Chavetz Chaim so beautifully. Now the Chavetz Chaim we know was was the tzaddik of his generation who waited every single day for Mashiach to come. He had a bag that was packed in the front of his house. Maybe he had a little closet over there in his coat closet. And it was packed with his Mashiach suit. And he was waiting every single day. When he would hear noise in the middle of the night, he would say, he's here. Mashiach is here. And then he would get up and he would see Mashiach didn't come only to be disappointed. He was waiting and waiting and waiting. That's what it means. Did you wait for Mashiach? Not did you learn a class once a week about Mashiach. It's good, it helps. Not did you say, mention Mashiach in your davening. It helps. But when we tzapisele Yeshua, did we wait every single day because we realized, as we spoke about maybe in the first class, as glamorous as the gullus, as the exile is, as much comforts and luxuries every single person has in this world that we live in, it's nothing, it pales in comparison to the spiritual delight that a person is going to have when Mashiach will arrive. The Afal Pisha Yisma may, even though he will delay, says the Chavetz Chaim, he has to delay. Because there's too much correcting that we have to do, there's too much fixing up that we have to be involved with. So, nevertheless, he writes, 
even though that he's going to delay, I don't give up hope, I do not despair, because I know that it is a sign from HaKadosh Baruch Hu that he wants us to continue working hard and making the effort to do the tshuva that is necessary in order to activate the coming of Mashiach, and then HaKadosh Baruch will send him in a minute. We have coming up tonight, Bez Hashem, Chanukah. And Chanukah is a story of, of, of gullis, of exile, and geula, and redemption. It was an exile unlike any other one of our enemies. Normally the enemies come into Yushalayim, they come into Eretz Yisrael, and they kick the Jewish people out of there. And they destroy the Beis HaMiglash to the ground, they slaughter hundreds of thousands and millions of Jews so that the blood is running down the streets. And they try to eradicate us from the holiest place in the world, Eretz Yisrael, and the holiest concentration in the world, the Beis HaMiknash. However, the Yavanim, they held themselves to be much more advanced in culture and in intellect and philosophy than the rest of the enemies of the Jewish people. And they told the Jews, listen, we're not going to kick you out of the land. Stay where you are. You can stay in Eretz Yisrael. We're not going to destroy the Beis HaMikdash. We're going to make some changes in there. That's true. We'll get rid of the Kohanim. We'll get rid of the Levim. We'll put in Oib De'Avad people that are serving idols. We'll even put some idols in there. Instead of shechting a cow, you shecht a pig. But don't worry. The Beis HaMikdash will still be there. And you can live here. And we're not going to exile you out of the land. The exile that they tried to create was an exile, though, of the neshama of the soul. And this is always the question that a Jew has to ask themselves, which exile is worse for the Jewish people? The physical exile that we find from so many of our enemies, Bavel, the Babylonians, or we find by the Romans they, they, they sent us out, we find by the, the Germans, Yemach Shemom Vizikram, they killed six million of our Jews, isolating us, kicking us out of our homes, of our neighborhoods, of our communities, destroying our lives. It's bad. That's a terrible gullus, that's a terrible exile. But what's worse? What about a spiritual exile? When the neshama of the Jew is separated and removed from himself, as the Gemara tells us, Yisrael bli neshama, a Jew without a neshama is kiguf, uh, um, Yisrael bli Torah, uh, yeah, a Jew without the Torah is like a goof bli neshama, like a body without a soul. Just like a body cannot exist without a life force that is inside of there. The spirit of man has to be coursing through the veins coursing through every fiber of the body in order for the body to live, so too the Jews' neshama requires the Torah in order for the neshama to be considered alive. Otherwise, it's as if we are dead, we're not even around. We might be functioning, we might look like, you might see them wheeling and dealing and doing all these things, but without Torah. So the Jew's not really alive. So what's worse? When you have six million Jews who went to the gas chambers and the last word on their lips was Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad? Or when you have 14 million Jews in the world today, that if you would say the word Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad, about 10 million plus would say, what? what? What do those words mean? I never heard those words before. Is that Chinese? What language is that? The worst type of exile, and that's why the Greeks were so smart in what they wanted to accomplish. We don't have to kill the Jews. We don't have to exile them from their land and destroy their base of Migdash. But we're going to take out the soul of Klal Yisrael. We're going to take out the very nature what makes them into the special nation that they are. We'll take away their Torah, we'll take away their mitzvahs, we'll take away their identity. It's identity theft. Assimilation is identity theft. You're a Yid, you're a Jew. You have a Neshama you're such a beautiful, lofty soul. You have mitzvahs, you have Torah, you have Midas, you have Chesed. You have mercy, you have kindness, you have all of the attributes that liken you to Hashem. And comes along the Greeks and they say, let's just steal the identity of the Jewish people. Let's make them into what's called Misyavnim. Let's make them become like us. They'll become Grecian in our ways as well. That, many of our sages tell us, is the deepest, darkest, most painful exile 
that the Jewish people could ever be in. When you remove the Jew from the Jew, then it's hopeless. Even if he functions, even if he goes along, even if he's up and living for 120 years, but what's he living like? He doesn't know what he has in his pocket. He doesn't know what he has inside of his heart, inside of his soul. He lives his whole life in frivolity, chasing after meaningless things, doing nothing of consequence. Say our sages, that's worse than the physical exiles that our Kodesh Baruch Hu put us through in all the generations. What was the tikkun, what was the way that Klal Yisrael redeemed itself during the days of Hanukkah? So it's not Maccabee with big, big bulging muscles that went out there and they were pumping iron and they started throwing javelins and they were playing basketball seven feet high in the air, dunking the ball. That's not who it was that redeemed us in the days of Hanukkah. It's actually a, it's a farce that the one game that has anything to do with all physical might is called Maccabee. It has nothing to do with who the Maccabees were. The Maccabees were Kahanim, Kedoshim, Vitaharim. They were involved in Torah all of their life. They didn't have muscles. They didn't have, in, they didn't have strategies to go and fight the war. But they believed in Hashem. And they trusted in HaKadosh Baruch that He's not going to let His nation die. So what did they do? So when they... The, the Bach writes that the, the, the sin of the Jewish people during that time was They weakened in their adherence to mitzvahs. They weakened in their connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They weakened in their amuna. And once they weakened in all of those areas, so then it triggered in the heavens that the Greeks were able to move in to Eretz Yisrael, they were able to move in to Yushalayim, into the base of Migdash, and make all of the terrible decrees against them. To make all the terrible decrees against us and bring us down lower and lower and lower that we, we, would, that we would forget what the Ruchnius, what the Neshama, what the soul of the Jewish people is really all about. But when the Kohanim HaKadoshim, the great and holy Kohanim, and when the Hashmanoim, the Maccabeeim, they came together, and they banded together as one and they said, we're going to serve our Kodesh Baruch Hu. We're going to fight what's for our right as a Jew. We're going to go against our enemies that are trying to destroy us and assimilate us. Once that they did that, that was the tshuva that was necessary. And then our Kodesh Baruch Hu brought one mace, one miracle after the other. In the battle, there were miracles. In the base of Mignesh, there were miracles. With the oil, there were miracles. That a small band of Kohanim were able to conquer the mightiest of all armies. All Nisim and Niflos, all miracles. As a result of that, we came back to ourselves. We restored and rededicated the base of Mignesh. And it was a Geul, there was a redemption like no other. So what do we see? When does the Geul, or when does the redemption come to Klal Yisrael? It comes when we do tshuva. When we recognize the mistakes of our present, of our nation, when we recognize the mistakes of the past that have not yet been corrected, when we see the direction that we're moving in, that it's wrong and it's not right, that it's crooked and it's not straight, that it's going down instead of going up, when we recognize all of that, and we are, we are shayve, we, we return to where we belong, that itself brings about the ultimate redemption for Klal Yisrael. So Hanukkah itself is a tremendous time for the Jewish people to recall all of the miracles that HaKadosh Baruch has made for us and that the, the, the revelation that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought to Klal Yisrael during that time was that if in fact you will do teshuva and you will return and you will repent, and if you leave the ways of assimilation and the like, which is so devastating for our nation, worse than if you would be killed, worse than if you'd be sent out. Why, the famous story with Rav Hanan uh, with, with Vasemin, he was one of the main disciples of the Chavetz Chaim. And Rav Hanan Vasemin, he was in America at the time that World War II broke out. And they heard all the terrible reports coming and that the Nazis were moving in and they were plowing over villages and towns and they were killing people with, recklessly. So while Rav Hanan Wasim was here collecting money for his yeshiva, the Balabatim in America got together and they told him, Rav Hanan, stay here with us. 
We'll make you a, we'll make you a yeshiva. We'll get you talmidim. We'll get you students. Help us build Torah here in America. You go back there now, it's, it's assumed that you're going to get killed. Don't go back there. So Rav Chana Vasiman said that if my children, my wife, my family, and my Talmidim are going through the horrors that the Nazis are putting them through, how could I sit here in America and pretend as if that's not going on and rebuild my life? More than ever, they need me there to be machazik them, to strengthen them, to take care of them. Said Rabbi Chana Wasserman, I'm not staying in America another day. I'm getting on the next boat that is available, and I'm going back to Europe, back to Lita over there, to take care of my family, my students, and my yeshiva. And sure enough, he went, and he, he ran around the villages, around the towns, and he was machazik, he gave drushes, and he, he fired people up with a muna, with their faith. And he was able to show them that whatever is going on right now, don't lose your faith in Hashem. For although they will take our bodies, and although they will take our possessions, and although at the end of the day they will kill, and they will destroy a person, Nevertheless, said Rabbi Chanan Wasman, the neshama of a Jew will live on forever and ever and ever. And those eyewitness accounts that were there at the mass murder of Rabbi Chanan and his yeshiva and the town of Baranovich, they said that his final parting words to the Jewish people that were there gathered around their leader waiting to hear what's he going to say as they leave this world. They knew they're getting killed. He told them, Rabbi Sai, brother, my dear brothers and sisters of Klal Yisrael, we have an opportunity unlike any other. And that is right now to be martyrs for the sake of Klal Yisrael. And we can die, our P Kiddush Hashem, we can die a life of sanctifying HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name. For when a Jew will die as a Jew, and he will die for being a Jew, and he will die with his amuna and his faith and his bitachin in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, knowing that everything that Hashem does is with a plan and with a purpose. And I don't falter in my amuna for a second. That itself is a zechus, is a merit. For the neshama that's going to leave, you're going to go straight up to Gan Eden. Straight up to the pearly gates over there. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to usher you in. No gehenim, no judgment, nothing. Go straight up. That's a person who dies, Alpi Kiddush Hashem. But even a bigger schos, a greater merit that we have is to live, Alpi Kiddush Hashem, to live our lives according to sanctifying our Kodesh Baruch Hu's name. How are we going to do that if we don't know what we have inside of us? How are we going to live like that if we have no connection to Torah and mitzvahs? How are we going to live like that if we don't appreciate the greatness of the neshama that's inside and its holy connection and relation with Hashem? We won't be able to. And so the Greeks came along and they said, become a misyavnim, become like us, drop the mitzvahs, drop the Torah, give up your amuna, remove yourself from the nation of Klal Yisrael. Just be like us, dress like us, talk like us, walk like us, enjoy the pleasures of this world the way that we do. And they understood if they will do that to call you so you just took away everything that makes us a, a Jew. So in our times, it's really what we're saying over here, in our times the reason that there's such an arichus begalus, there's such a length of time for this exile to continue, and it just keeps dragging on one day after the next, one year after the next. The Chavetz Chaim passed away in 1933. He believed every single day Mashiach is going to come. We're talking about a hundred years ago almost. And still Mashiach is not here. And it's getting worse and worse and worse for Klal Yisrael. But all of that is the wake-up call. It's time for us to do Teshuvah. And just like the Maccabeeim, when they band together, that's what Mem Chaf Beis Yud Maccabi, Mi Chamaycha Ba'elim Hashem, who is like you above Hashem? Their whole life was to recognize the greatness of our Kodesh Baruch Hu. They're not going to fall down to the servitude, the spiritual servitude of the Greeks, even though the rest of the world has. Western culture and society, it's all Greek. Their culture, 
their sport, their entertainment, their bodies, their, their, their everything, their art, every, everything, their philosophy, everything they do, that's the Greeks. And they tried to suck our neshamas out of us. But the Maccabim said, Mi chamoicha be'elim Hashem. Who is like you up there, Hashem? Nobody. The Greeks are nothing compared to you. Their intellect, their savvy, their charisma, their strength, their might, nothing compared to you, HaKadosh Baruch. And therefore we unite our hearts and our souls with you. As the Gullis, as the exile drags on for us in our generation, we have to be reminded the same thing. That the reason it's going on is because Hashem says, make tikkun and fix yourselves up. Fix up the people around you. Fix up the families. Fix up the communities. Fix up the kehilas. Fix up Klal Yisrael. How are we going to do that? The way that we're going to do that is by doing tshuva. And if a person doesn't do tshuva, so then the godless and the exile continues to go on and on and on. And that's really this very precious time that we have coming up of Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a time to regroup to reconnect to who we really are as people. It's a time to let the lights of our neshama shine brighter than the darkness of the choymer of the physical world that is around us. Because the more that we attach ourselves to this world, the more that we are giving in to the Greeks. And then they continue to be the victors, and we continue to be the losers. But if in fact we will be strong, and we will buckle down, and we will do what our Kodesh Baruch Hu wants us to do, that will be the ultimate to bring about the Geula for Klal Yisrael. Now he brings over here from the Vilna Goyin the following words. The Vilna Goyin writes, Keitz ha'achrayim, lo'i tali b'tshuva. The Vilna Goyin seems to be saying over here the opposite of the Rambam and the opposite of what the Chavetz Chaim just said. And that is the end of our Golis of our exile which means when the ge'ula, when the redemption is going to come, it is not dependent upon the Jewish people doing tshuva, repenting. Ela bechesed, rather it has to do with our chesed, with not our chesed, it has to do with the chesed that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings to our nation. Where is the chesed? That means that tshuva is not going to merit us a portion in this world to come and merit as a portion in the Geula, in the redemption, rather it is going to come as a result of the Chesed of Hashem. Lamani, Lamani Baruch Hu says, I'm going to do it for myself because I need to, re- I need to restore the glory of the Rebbeinu Shalom. The Gab is Chus it also come because of the merit of our forefathers. That's what it says. Remember the kindness of your forefathers. And then in that merit, Hashem will bring the Redeemer to their children and grandchildren. For the sake of Hashem's name. Now what does that mean over here? How can the Vilna Gon argue on the Chavetz Chaim? How can the Vilna Gon argue on the Rambam? The Rabbim said, Ein nigolin ele b'tshuva. The only way the Klai Yisrael is going to be redeemed is if we do tshuva, if we repent, we come close to HaKadosh Baruch again. And the Chavetz Chaim says, that's the reason that the Golis is going on for such a long time. Because we need more time to be able to allow tshuva to resonate inside of us to do what is right. Says the Vilna Gai, tshuva has nothing to do with it. The Geul is only going to come because Hashem does chesed. Because Hashem is going to be kind to us. Because he's going he's gonna to look back on the annals of history and he'll see Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. He'll see Yosef and all of his brothers. He'll see the Babas and the Zaydis that fought for the sake of Hashem all of their lives and say, in their schos, in their merit, I'm going to bring the Gula, bring the redemption. What, so what's our tshuva for then? Then there's no reason there's a tshuva according to the words over here, the Vilna Gain. So I was thinking that perhaps the pshat, the answer is, is that we are obligated to tshuva. Of course we are. We're obligated to recognize our faults and our mistakes and to correct our ways. That's all part of our obligation. And we have an obligation to look at the mistakes of the previous generations and the crooked pathways that we've been going in as a result of that. All of that is true. 
However, as much as we are going to do tshuva, as much as we are going to try, at the end of the day, it's not because of our tshuva that we're going to be redeemed. At the end of the day, the ultimate redemption is going to come because of the chesed that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does on our behalf to rescue us and to save us. Tshuva alone is not enough to bring about the redemption. The straightening out of our crooked ways is not enough to bring in the Mashiach. The changing of our levels of ruchnis from lower to higher is certainly not going to be enough to herald in the news that Mashiach is coming. But you need to do that in order to trigger the pipelines of chesed, of kindness that HaKadosh Baruch is bringing here into this world. And that's really the same thing that took place by Hanukkah, which we, which we have to think about and realize. It's not only because the Maccabeeim and the Chashmanoim did tshuva, did HaKadosh Baruch Hu make miracles and allow us to win the war and defeat our enemies and come back in the base of Migdash and have the miracle, the oil. That was just what triggered the ultimate kindness and the ultimate chesed and the ultimate mercy from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Because would it not be for Hashem's intervention, would it not be for His miraculous way in which He runs the world and He watches over and takes care of Klai Yusuf, we never ever would have been redeemed and we would not have been able to have a geula, a redemption at that time. And so too, I'd like to say the same thing over here. We have an obligation to do tshuva. We have to examine our deeds. We have to think, as the Chavaz Chaim says, there's a reason that things are taking such a long time. You know, sometimes when a parent gets upset with a child because the child is doing something that is not appropriate for their age, so the parent will come and they will talk to the child and the child doesn't have a good answer. So what does the father say? Think about it for a little while. When you have an answer, come back to me and tell me. So HaKadosh Baruch is saying the same thing. The Golis is going on and on and on and on for thousands, for thousands of years. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch is telling us, think about it. Why are you in Golis? Why are we in exile? Why don't we have a base of Migdash? Why is there so much anti-Semitism? Why are there so many tzoros, rabbis, verois, so much suffering that the Jewish people have to go through on a daily basis? Why do you know so many people that are in pain and are not able to have a day in their life where there's not suffering that is going on? Why is all this taking place? And the answer is we have to think and we have to become introspective in our own personal lives and we have to have the broader picture of Klal Yisrael and our success and our struggles. And we have to realize how Kaddish Baruch Hu is waiting for us to do tshuva, to return to Him. If we do that, then we activate the pathways of chesed, of rachamim, of mercy. And our Kaddish Baruch Hu says, now I'm going to bring the geula, now I'll bring the redemption. Now I'm going to bring Mashiach Zikenu into your lives. Now I'm going to save the world from the destructive forces that are out there because you are showing me that you're waiting for a greater time, a better time. You want that HaKadosh Baruch you want me to bring the Mashiach and rescue from the depths. And that's why he quotes over here, the Midrash says, Ein Yisrael nigolim elem devarim. The Jewish people will only be redeemed in the merit of five things. Number one, mitaych tzara, there's going to be pain, there's going to be difficulties that the Jewish people are going to have to endure in the final days before Mashiach will come. Mitaych tfila, but we're going to have to turn to our Kodesh Baruch and daven with all of our hearts and ask, I'm waiting Hashem, please bring Mashiach. Mitaych zechus avais, also, number three writes is in the merit of our forefathers, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. They lived lives where the whole life represented bringing Shechin into this world, allowing HaKadosh Baruch Hu to do what it was supposed to do in, in, uh, for Klau Yisrael. Number four, Mitaych Tshuva. We must do Teshuva. We must repent. We don't have a choice. We have to work on that. And number five, Mitaych HaKetz. And the last one is, there is an end to all of this. 
And HaKadosh Baruch has already decided when that end is going to be. So when all these five things are converging together as one, so then HaKadosh Baruch is going to bring the ultimate bracha to the Jewish people. And that, and that bracha is that He's going to bring us to the redemption that we are waiting for each and every day of our lives. Even though that HaKadosh Baruch Hu delays, and even though that HaKadosh Baruch Hu waits, we, we, uh, that he, he makes everything longer, we are waiting for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to come and bring the Geula to the world. So we cannot avoid tshuva. We cannot avoid sorrows. We cannot avoid difficulties and challenges. We cannot avoid that we have to daven with all of our hearts. We cannot avoid that things are not always going to go the way that we want them to. We can't avoid that. That's a chilek, that's a portion of the coming of Mashiach. When we do it in the right way, so then we invite HaKadosh Baruch His chesed and rachamim, His kindness and His mercy into this world to be able to bring Mashiach in our days. And the last idea that I want to leave off with over here today is the following. And that is, as the Rambam himself writes, We have to realize that everybody talks about Mashiach is going to come, it's going to be like this, it'll be like that, we can't wait. Nobody knows what they're talking about, says the Rambam. Nobody saw it with their own eyes, nobody knows exactly how Kodesh Baruch is going to bring it. And therefore, nobody knows really what's going to be. Ad shiyu until it's here. Until Mashiach will come and he will announce his arrival and the changes will start being made in the world, nobody will know what it's going to be like. Shadvarim stumin heinetzalenevim. The details of Mashiach were hidden from the prophets. Even the Chazal, the wise men of the previous generations, they also don't have a Messiah, they have no transmission from Har Sinai what exactly it was going to look like. Nevertheless, says the Rambam, And you should know, and that is why, that since then nobody can know what it's going to look like, nobody knows what it's going to be like. Therefore, we do not pin our faith in our Kodesh Baruch Hu on the on the details of what it's going to be like when Mashiach comes. We pin our faith in this thirteen principles of faith in this twelfth one over here. We pin it on the fact that we know that Mashiach is going to come. We know that he is going to arrive. And we know that He is going to usher in a much greater world for us that's going to be free of suffering and pain. And the Jewish people are going to be able to live their lives totally dedicated to Hashem. And the smoke screen of Olam Hazah of this world with all the trimmings and all the gashmi, all of the physicality and all the luxury and everything we have, it's going to become meaningless in our eyes because we'll realize what's the main thing? The main thing is to be a yid. What's the main thing about being a Jew? The main thing is that my neshama should be connected to Hashem like we learned in the story of Hanukkah. So that is our amuna. that is our faith. And that is what we trust in and we believe in and it's a piece of the Yeshua waiting every single day that it should take place. The details, it's irrelevant, says the, says the Rambam. You can't know because nobody can see it. And anybody who says, I think they say over from the, from, uh, Rav, uh, from Rav, um, Yaakov Kamenetsky, he said over the following line, anyone who says that they know what, when Mashiach is coming and what it's going to be like, they don't know. And anybody who knows, they don't, they don't say that they know. Which means nobody knows what is going to be, when it's going to come exactly. But we know it's going to be better. And we know it's going to be shlemus. We know there's going to be a perfection in the world. And we know our enemies are going to leave us alone. And we know we're going to be able to learn Torah. We're going to be able to do chesed and mitzvahs well like we never did before. We know that the most important thing in our life is going to become being proud to be part of Klal Yisrael, and we're not going to be twisted in our thoughts and our mind the way that the assimilation of the world is going right now. We'll say, oh, Gevald, was I so foolish? Did I really do all of those things in my life because I thought it was going to bring me happiness and pleasure and it was going to make my life a better life? Was I such a tipish, such a fool? The answer is yes. In a world without Mashiach, we are foolish. In a world without Mashiach, we don't see the truth. In a world of Mashiach, we don't understand the great strength that's inside of our neshama. Once Mashiach will come, our eyes open up 
and we see all the glory of what it means to be a member of Klal Yisrael, to be a dedicated Oyvet Hashem, a servant of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to be someone who will live their life for the sake of Torah and of mitzvahs and Kedusha and Tahara, that's all that's going to matter. When that will come, the Jewish people, we don't know when that's going to be. But when that will come, it will be revealed in front of us all of the details of the days of Mashiach. Our waiting for Mashiach is not because, well, maybe it's going to be like this. That's not what we're waiting for. We're waiting for Mashiach to come. Our amun, our faith is based and predicated upon that. Says the Rambam over here, it's not from our foundations of Amuna, the details of the Geul, of the redemption, rather from the foundations of our amun, of our faith is the redemption is going to take place. When? We don't know. Who does know? HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows. And therefore, as the Midrash says, he sends us tsara, difficulties to wake us up, to help us to get to the point where we want to do tshuva. He asks us to be mispala, to daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu on a regular basis, to elevate ourselves and bring more glory to the Shechina. He wants us that this chus is to recognize the merits of our forefathers in the past. They themselves were the powerhouses of Amuna that were worthy of bringing Mashiach to the world. And then there's tshuva that we have to do. And on top of all of that, there is a kates. There is an end to it all. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows when that is. And when the time will be ripe, when all of these universes converge properly, and the Jewish people are doing tshuva and they're working through the tsaras and they're clarifying things and they know what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants of them and they're working out the mistakes of themselves of the past, setting the, the record straight for the future. Then HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, now I can bring Mashiach to the world. When will it be? You don't know. What's it going to look like? It doesn't seem relevant. But just know that for Mashiach to come is going to be the greatest thing anybody could ever dream of, imagine and anticipate. So as we prepare ourselves today to light the first candles of the Hanukkah Menorah, which itself is a miracle of lights, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving us the message that the neshama of the Jewish people always shines bright. The neshama that is inside of us always has a way back, a pathway to come closer to Hashem. That even when we're misyavnim, even when we assimilated, even when we went farther away, when it sometimes looks like, how are we going to get back? How are we going to become more Jewish? How are we going to become more thinking the way that the Torah wants us to think, become someone that's thinking more along the lines of a culture? How are we going to do that? Hanukkah teaches us that kimat kat in an instant, once you dedicate yourself and you want, Hashem opens up pathways. He opens up avenues. He opens up roads for you of ruchnis, of spirituality, to get you back to the place where we belong. We should be zeicher, we should merit in Yetz Hashem as we continue to learn the 13 principles of faith. And now we learned the 12th one, which is the coming of Mashiach. We should be zeicher through our learning, through our growth, together through the tshuva that we do for ourselves, elevating our consciousness to understand exactly to the best of our abilities what it means to be a Jew and how to execute and how to actualize that potential that's in us. That should be the actions that Hashem is looking for down here in this world to activate His chesed, His kindness, to activate His rachmanis, His mercy and klal Yisrael and to bring about the ultimate simcha, the ultimate joy, the ultimate mace, the ultimate miracle for klal Yisrael which is going to be the Bias Goyal Tzedek, the coming of Mashiach Zidkeinu, Bimheira Veyameinu, speedily and in our days. A Fredech and Chanukah to everyone, and we should be Zeichet to the Emes Geula, the ultimate and the true redemption. All the best. Thank you, Rabbi. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Happy Chanukah to everyone.